Hello students, in this video, I will discuss a very important experiment to measure the band gap by four probe method. So we will measure the resistivity of a semiconductor sample using this four probe method and then we can find out easily the band gap or energy band gap of semiconductor. So in this experiment, we will measure the resistivity of a sample inside a oven and by changing the temperature the resistivity will change and from that we can find out the band gap of the semiconductor. So four probe method is one of the standard and widely used method for the accurate measurement of resistivity of semiconductors and we will pass a fixed current using the outer contacts and measure the voltage using the inner contacts with variation in temperature or at different temperature and from that we can find out the resistivity rho naught but because the sample dimensions have uh, some role in the resistivity so this thickness w and the distance between the contact w by s ratio will give us a factor which is known as the correction factor F which we will use for the uh, final calculation of resistivity of the given crystal. So the resistivity of the crystal is given by rho equal to rho naught divided by this correction factor F where rho naught it depends on B by I into 2 pi S where S is the distance between the contacts and B and I uh, is measured from the instrument at different temperature. The energy band gap Eg of the semiconductor crystal is given by Eg equal to 2k into log rho versus 10 to the power 3 by T and it is the slope of this curve. If we plot 1000 by T versus log rho, we have this kind of curve and from this state portion, we can find out the slope AC by BC and which is used for calculation of band gap Eg equal to 2k into AC by BC and where k is the Boltzmann constant it is the value is 8.62 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt per Kelvin or in Joule it is 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 Joule per Kelvin. So this is how we can find out the band gap Eg by calculating the resistivity of a semiconductor crystal. Now we move to Viber questions. What is a four probe method? Four probe method is used to measure the resistivity of a material and this method involves four equally spaced probes as shown in this figure. One, two, three, four and they are equally spaced at distance S and outer probes 1 and 4 these are used for sending the current and inner probes are used for measuring the voltage across the sample. Why 4 probe method is better than 2 probe method? In 2 probe method we measure the current and voltage using the same 2 probes like in multimeter and therefore it results in contact resistance and also the internal resistance. So the overall value of resistance gets affected. Therefore, to achieve the accurate results, four probe method is used. In four probe method, we use the four probes for the measurement of resistance resistivity, and it is used for measurement of small resistances or small impedance values. And at such low values, the contact resistance is very important and separate leads are used in this method for the current and voltage measurement and current flow through the outer contacts and potential difference is measured across the inner contacts. So effect of the interfacial resistance between electrodes and sample is eliminated in this process. So that's why four probe method is better than two probe method. So why correction factor F is used for the resistivity formula 
using the four poor method. So we have seen that using dif different W by S values. W is the thickness of the sample and S is the distance between groups. And for this different WS, W by S ratio, we can put this value F. This is the correction factor which will be used for the accurate measurement of the resistivity. So the geometry of the sample, it determines the correction factor that will be used using this table. And a crystal have some thickness W and S is the distance between the probes. So using these values, we can find out the correction factor. And rho naught means without correction factor, it is 2 pi S into V by I. This is the resistivity without correction factor. When X is fixed, it is in uh, around 2 millimeter or 0.2 centimeter in our case. But it may be different for the other setup. If the sample thickness W is less than the distance between the probes, means if the thickness is much less than 2 millimeter or 0.2 centimeter, then we will have to apply the correction factor and the resistivity. Now, resistivity will be rho which, which uh, rho naught means without the correction factor divided by this correction factor F. So, this is the how we can find out the resistivity of a particular crystal. Which semiconductor crystal you have used and what is the standard value of band gap for it? We are using the germanium crystal and at room temperature or 300 Kelvin, the band gap EG for germanium is 0.67 electron volt and for the silicon, the band gap is 1.12 electron volt at room temperature. What do you understand by energy band gap? The energy required for electrons to transition from the balance band to conduction band is called the band gap. What is resistivity of a material? It is a property of a material and it displays how much a material will oppose the flow of current and its unit is ohm meter or ohm centimeter and conductivity is opposite of the resistivity. How materials are classified according to their band gap? And what is the difference in band gap of a semiconductor and conductor? So, classification of materials based on the band gap is divided in three categories. So, these are insulators, conductors, and semiconductor. And if we see the energy band diagram for the metals or conductors, the balance band and the conduction band they are overlapped. Whereas in case of the insulators, the balance band and conduction band have a big gap which is known as the band gap. It is much greater than 3 electron volt. Whereas in the case of the semiconductors, this balance band and conduction band have gap around less than 3 electron volt. So basically it is around 1 to 2 electron volt in semiconductors. So according to the band gap diagram, we can classify the materials according to the conductors, insulators and semiconductor. So, uh, conductors have no band gap, uh, the conduction band and balance band, they overlap. Whereas in case of the insulators, the band gap is much greater than 3 electron volt. Whereas in case of the semiconductor, band gap is less than 3 electron volt. The examples of conductors are copper, iron, gold, aluminium, these are good conductors of electricity, whereas in insulators are non-conductors of electricity and the uh, examples are plastics, rubber, glass, mica, etc. And the semiconductors which are uh, the elemental semiconductor are silicon, germanium and the compound semiconductors are gallium arsenide, cad cadmium sulphide, etc and their conductivity is in between the conductors and insulators. What is Fermi level? So Fermi level is the highest level that an electron can occupy at absolute zero temperature. So it is the Fermi level, uh, most of the electrons are in balance band and it is the Fermi level is in uh, near to balance band 
and at absolute zero this is in between conduction band and balance band so fermi level lies between the balance band and conduction band because at absolute zero temperature the electrons are all at the lowest energy state so they are most of the electrons are in balance band and that is the lowest energy state what do you understand by intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors intrinsic semiconductors are pure or undoped semiconductor materials and extrinsic semiconductors are impure semiconductors generated by adding an impurity to a pure semiconductor what are p type and n type materials if a trivalent impurity such as indium gallium aluminum are added in intrinsic semiconductor then it is known as p type semiconductor and in p type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are holes and minority charge carriers are electrons whereas in pentavalent impurity atoms such as phosphorus antimony arsenic they are added in intrinsic semiconductor it is known as n type semiconductor and the majority charge carriers are electrons in this case how conductivity of metals and semiconductors varies with temperature this is the case for the conductors where we can see with the increase in temperature the resistivity is increasing and this is because of the random motion of electrons and also the vibration of the positive ion cores that is the nucleus and as a result the number of collision increases and hence the resistance of the conductor increases with the increase in the its temperature whereas in case of the semiconductor with the increase in the temperature the resistivity gets decreased as the temperature increases the electrons in the balance band can go into conduction band and that's why the conductivity increases and which result in the decrease in the resistance and the resistivity of a semiconductor is exponentially decreases with the temperature this is exponential decay in case of the semiconductors on which factors the conductivity of the germanium crystal depends it depends on temperature as well as on its purity or the crystal defects and crystal defects are the irregular arrangement of atoms in a crystal what is ohmic and non ohmic resistors the ib curve of a resistor is straight line then it is known as the ohmic contact or ohmic resistor and if the ib curve is non linear then it is known as the non ohmic resistors how band gap can be calculated using the resistivity versus temperature measurement as we know that band gap is the measure of the energy and for excitation of electrons to conduction band energy must be supplied to the semiconductor to decrease the resistivity and this energy is supplied thermally means we are changing the temperature and corresponds to the band gap energy and these are related as eg equal to 2k into log rho versus 1 by t or 2k into slope of this curve if we plot the temperature 1000 by t versus log rho and it this uh, curve will give us the slope of this curve ac by bc will give us the band gap so using this uh, slope will be uh, 2.3026 into log rho by 1 by t and because it was natural log so if we want to get it the resistivity at uh, log 10 base then we will have to multiply it by this factor 2.3026 and if we put the value of k in uh, electron volt per kelvin that is 8.62 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt per kelvin then we can find out eg equal to 2 into this k and slope is ac by bc and it is 1000 factor is in here in temperature so that's why we get the eg equal to 0.396 into this ratio ac by bc and this term is in uh, band gap is 
in electron bone. So this is how we can find out the uh, band gap using the resistivity versus temperature measurement. What are the applications of four probe method? So it is used for the remote sensing areas to measure the resistivity of soil or fields for archaeological survey or groundwater resources and for the resistance thermometers for measuring the environmental temperature. Measurements of the uh, sheet resistances for the silicon vapors used for the devices the sheet resistances uh, can be measured using the four probe method and also in hardening process so if we measure the resistance of a material then we can know the hardness of that material also and testing of fuel cells for the uh, bipolar plates so measurement of resistivity of anode and cathode plates to make the uh, bipolar plates in fuel cells it uh, this method four probe method is also used In next video, we will discuss the basics of the Frank Hertz experiment and also about the discrete energy level and Weber questions based on Frank Hertz experiment. And in last video, we have discussed the solar cells and the characteristics of the solar cells. So if you have any comments or any questions, please write in the comment box. And thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe this channel. Thank you very much.